but moving into, let's say they click on your ad. Yeah. Are you sending them through a funnel or do you just straight up send them to a call page? You know, uh, so my funnel is, is a call page. Um, so it basically like um, might be like a, excuse me, like a short, um, let me back up. Depending on the intent level of the ad is going to change the intent. I'm going to throttle and test the intent level on the landing page. Okay. So for instance, if I were to run a image of a senior holding up cash and they were to come and <laughs> all they see is a big phone number and says call here. Yeah. I'm going to get a lot of phone calls. They're going to be mm -hmm. horrible quality. It's going to be very bad for my advertiser. My, my payouts are going to come down. They're going to turn me off. People are going to be confused. It's a bad consumer experience. On the inverse, if I said a video ad, I said you have to enroll here and then you put them through a 100 question survey before I show them the phone number. People that call are probably going to enroll right away, but I'm going to get two people to do that. So I yeah. have no scale. I, it's not profitable. It doesn't make any sense to do. So all that to be said is it fits somewhere in the middle. And right. that's what will throttle is essentially the intent of the individual along the funnel. So if they came in low intent, I may test a little bit more high intent of like, just say taking them through a 20 question or a 10 question um, questionnaire that maybe doesn't have anything to do. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes or no. Are you over the age of 65? Well, I know they are because that's what I targeted. Yes or no. But I'm actually having them add intent. Yeah. So they're getting more buy-in, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting more bought in. So um, so all that to be said is I'll throttle the intent on, on the pages. But bef before I show a call to action, after I show a call to action, but I will say the common theme is I always have, and you're, you're the one who actually said it, the benefit statement. Like most of my marketing has nothing to do with the actual uh, X's and O's of what the product was. Like I remember we had a weight loss clinic um, customer. This is going back nine, 10 years ago. And the biggest headline was, it's not your fault. That was one of the best headlines I've ever written. It's not your fault. So people overweight us, it's not your fault. Why? Because I understood my demographic. I understood mm -hmm. where they were. Now, do I totally believe in that statement? Not really. Like, Eh, you know, okay. Like you, you could work out, eat healthy. You and I are in good shape. Like there's a lot more to it, but I really empathize with my customer. And then I talked a lot about the benefit statements on looking good, feeling healthy, energy, being able to pick up their kids, being they, being when they're older, have, being active, all these mm -hmm. things that I, that, right. I'm just, I'm just kind of spitting stuff on the benefit, but I never talked about, you're going to go meet with the doctor first and he's going to sit you down and they're going to do a nutrition plan. And it's the best doctor. He's going to do a great nutrition plan with you. And it's, going to break down your macros mm -hmm. and then from there you're going to get a lesson plan on how to work out and you're going to go three times a sounds like homework <laughs> i've never really talked about the actual products right much like even the chair example if you gave like or that i gave i, I might sprinkle in some stuff it's this it's this special that 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 but i'm not really not like there's a thousand count fiber on the chair i'm talking about why the hell you want the chair you right know look cool you want to feel good whatever those things are so i will say throughout my you're talking about my actual landing pages and funnels I'm very heavily answering reservations, like we mentioned. So I'm, I'm getting in their head before they, they even say, like, mm -hmm. oh, this feels expensive. Like I'm already hitting that reservation dead mm -hmm. on at that point. And then I'm talking all about the different benefits. And if I'm doing it really well, I've targeted my messaging and my messaging is congruent with the different benefits st statements. So the guy who's got back pain got targeted because he had back pain. So saw the ad only because I, I demographically targeted him on back pain. My ad talked about back pain. My landing page talked about back pain. He bought because of back pain. I didn't buy because it, it had gold plates. On right. It. Whereas the guy who's maybe, let's call it the ego, I'm just being funny, the ego, <laughs> you know, I've targeted, I've talked about, and my landing page is congruent with that. So that's when I've gotten really good is when I'm saying, are you a, a mid 20 year old in the Arizona that runs a great YouTube channel and mm -hmm. podcast that's really, <laughs> like, you're like, that's freaking me. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, that's when I've done really good is when I've yeah. marketed my marketing messaging to my different. Mm -hmm. That was probably the biggest revelation for me. My beginning days like I had a client that was like a beauty salon they did nails lip injections liposuction all this stuff and they're just trying to send traffic to a website where it's all of it like you just need to run an ad of people who want lip injections to a landing page offering lip injections exactly. just scheduling an offer for lip injections that's the easiest way to do it or the best way to do it so I had a question regarding your I guess pre-qualification process if you guys didn't understand what he was doing with the questionnaire is you're trying to get people to put enough skin in the game or enough effort in where the only people willing to go through that really have the problem. And then once they've done that work, they feel like kind of obligated to even show up to the call or to actually call. Sure. And they're more qualified in a way. Yeah. So you're trying to find a balance. You don't want to do a hundred questions because that's too much work, but you don't want to do no questions because then yes. it's people who want like lazy solutions. Okay. So is are your landing pages, 
are you first off what are you using to build landing pages yeah. and is that type form for your applications or what are you doing no I don't, I, there's, I, actually a lot of our stuff's cus, custom built but there's so many off off the shelf really so you can that you can. you're landing like you have like a wordpress developer php wordpress yeah so it's built on, mm. on wordpress and exactly it's all it's all custom custom at hmm. this point but uh mostly that's for flexibility and listen there there's some uh, unbelievable products out there that um may even be cheaper or simpler or anything like that we i've just we've so you're having videos made by a team yes. that you're hiring, and then you're building the websites custom, correct? And then you're just using traditional like Google Pixels or Facebook Pixels to track. Right. Okay, that's exactly. cool. And I'm buying media within the actual ad platform. Yeah, so I know there's third party. Yeah, buyers. it's complicated. But um, and, and they might they might be great, but th from for our business that that that's how we 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 run it. And I was gonna make another comment. Oh, I was gonna say a really good place to look is not your like the most competitive industries. Like I love looking at like DUI attorneys, like shit like that. That like. Some of the best, I go where the best marketers flock. They don't necessarily run ads there. I'm not like, I oh, do I compete with the best of the best. I'm not trying to be a cool guy. I'm, but like, they've got some really good shit. That's where you're learning from? I'm learning a yeah. lot. I'm uh -huh. learning a lot from not even my industry. I'm learning from other industries. Mm. And back to, you were talking about the intent. Like, dude, one of the best exercises you could do is go try and buy a car. Those guys have mastered hmm. what you're talking about as far as the intent. You walk in there and you go, how much is this car? If he's a good salesperson, he goes, well, I'll hold what are you looking for? Tell me mm -hmm. about you, right? And you're there for fucking six hours. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, you're like, screw it. I'll pay it. <laughs> it's right? Like, like a two-hour webinar. <laughs> that's that's dramatic, right? And, and listen, it's it's less because you're there in person mm -hmm. versus like, you know, on and you can hit an hack. So there's a balance. But but um, that that's an awesome, annoying sales process mm -hmm. to go through just to understand what we were talking about as far as intent. No, 100%. I walked in a lot. I said, how much for that Mercedes? And he said, 50 grand. I go, nah. Walked the other way. But if I drove it, got seat massagers. Yeah, I did the whole thing, right? And I went through it, and then you broke it down. Then it's fifty. I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, maybe. You know, but with maybe. financing, you only need five thousand down yes. today. <laughs> and and don't take that so literally because I don't think you put someone through a two hour webinar. Or I'm not the hundred. No, I know. Hundred question, question, but just 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 to plant the seed as far as intent is in, is important and split testing and throttling. I don't think I've ever heard anyone split testing and throttling like intent across the funnel. Mm. That that's really important to throttle that and split test that based on how low of intent and how high of intent, which mm. economics will work best for your uh, advertiser mm. and your ad agent. And dude, I'm sorry, I forgot the actual question. I went back. That was a better answer. Oh. That's all I, that's all I know. Okay. But more so than what's just, I guess the last question on this website. So you're doing questionnaires. Do you, have you ever tested like a, a short webinar, a VSL, any sort like videos, uh, on, like you know, your trust building, your authority building? Years ago, we ran, we were doing an info product and we did, we did a webinar and uh, admittedly, I, I think we had less than a hundred grand spend. So I, I mm. I'm, there's far better people to ask for that. Okay, cool. I, yeah, I guess insurance isn't doesn't make as much sense. Everyone kind of understands what it is. You don't have to teach them it, that and much. It, and it could, could it could potentially. Um, we we haven't tested. But just a straight up, like once they get on the landing page, they have to opt in. Like, do they put their email in first, and then they get the questionnaire? So, um, and, and I use that as an example. So we've we've ran really long form advertorials for sure, which is like a, an advert advertorial. What, I've never heard of that. It's a um, think of it like a. Um, you're reading like a newspaper article type kind of thing. So we'll talk about. Uh, oh, is this, is this long for advert? Yes. Okay. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead and explain advert. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's long form. So essentially there's a lot of text copy on it. So you'd send someone from a uh, Facebook ad to your landing page. 10,000 characters. Right. And, and there, there's a middle ground to there too, right? Where it could feel like a normal like Yahoo Finance article or something right. where it's maybe got, you know, uh, 2,000 characters or, or whatever, whatever it is on it. But it's really all tax, and it could be written as a third party. So you could be a third party endorsing the chair. It could mm. be a first party. It could be a, a customer's review about the chair, and it's and it's long form. So that you're really going through like, like all the sales psychology, like testimonial, exactly. social proof, all of it. And a lot of it's exactly what we talked about it. Yeah. In text copy, we'll, yeah. we'll do that. We split test that. You split test with like yes, no questions. So are you this? Are you this? Are you that? And honestly, for us, because we're into and, and goals to drive a phone call. Um, a lot of it is that the call to action is just the phone. Okay. Like immediately. Call this phone number. And, and and that works. People will actually call the number right off there. And I didn't even actually capture. So no email drift just campaigns call. needed, just straight up. And and I would say on that too, a lot of times like, um, and this is a bi uh, bias comment because I'm so used to like, I call it telephony phone calls and stuff yeah. like that. But um, I would re I actually get to interview Gary V, which was really yeah, it was super cool. Oh, cool. Super, and one of the things he made a huge case to was, and I'm not saying ditch email, but he's like, dude, text message marketing. Yeah, SMS right now is big. Shit. And I sent a text. The next week, my team took maybe 
20 minutes to load up. We texted all of our old customers. I think we literally made $175,000 in the first hour. And like an hour, just like literally like one text, no sequence. Because they can just call. Twilio. Found their phone. Yeah, Twilio. And I literally just went, you know, we just hit it. We sent, it was like one sentence and then called the number. And it was like, it like freaking made so much money. So so we started ca- capturing more phone numbers and text messaging mm-hmm. and, and uh, essentially putting them through a sequence and stuff like that. But I would, I would, uh, I would, I would touch on if someone's like, Put a lot of effort again towards email, like just like a poke is like text messages. I think there's like a 90 plus percent open rate. I don't know about you. I've opened every text I've ever got. Oh, yeah. 90 plus just open. to get it off my 100 percent. Yeah. 90 percent open rate, which is not even close to email. And then the response rate, I think I don't I'm making up numbers. You can fact check me. I think it's like at least for us, we had like a 10 percent mm. all in rate, which is like it's really good. That's email. Good, good click through. It's like 3 yeah. percent and the open rate is only 40. So it's insane. I just want to add context here for everyone listening. There, in marketing, there's so much nuance. You have to understand your demographic. And so the reason I asked about VSLs or videos, because I'm maybe more in the info product world, and then but he has an older demographic in this example, and those older people may like to read because they're used to reading the newspaper, and so that's native to them. That's right. And then they prefer to call, and so SMS is better than email. Yep. And so you have to be intentional with those choices. Is it email? Is it text? Is it both? Probably both, but... Whatever, like you have to really think through your target demographic and what's natural to them.